14,000 plus are on hand here at the Mecca. And the opening tip out of bounds, and it will be controlled to Georgetown, a veteran officiating crew with us today. The Silver Fox, Brian O'Connell, <laughs> Jeffrey Clark, and Evan Burroughs. Folks, this Georgetown team is going to try to get Ishmael Masood off early, number 25 in blue, because if he can see the basket early, and all of a sudden he can stretch that defense and allow Jaden Epps to be able to get into the cracks and crevices and be able to score. Styles is the straw that stirs the drink, but he's a little bit late in getting it going, and that opening sequence, a shot clock violation, and already the St. John's defense, which you pointed out to me prior to the game, was going to be a crucial element. Looks pretty good. Yeah, all these guys are new to each other, so it takes a little while to understand who the weaker defenders are and to be able to communicate and cover for each other. They did it beautifully on that possession. Now the graduate senior, John Conway, getting an opportunity to start today. That means a lot to him, I'm sure, and to his family. Here's Soriano, and he's fouled inside as he took it up against Supreme Cook. Young man out of East Orange, New Jersey, transferred in from Fairfield. His first foul. Yes, the pre cook did a really nice job of preventing Joel Soriano from going over his left shoulder, which is where he wants to go, but he's got to make sure that he keeps enough space between him and Soriano that he doesn't pick up that foul. He's got to keep his hands vertical. No one was happier to have an opportunity to be coached by Rick Patino mm -hmm. than was Joel Soriano. And it's noteworthy that he is the major, really only holdover from the team of Mike Anderson's a year ago. He is an absolute double-double in waiting in just about every game, but he doesn't have to score as much now as he once did because of the way Patino likes to play offensively. Yes. He comes up empty at the stripe here. Yes, scoring's down, but he's still rebounding and blocking shots, and he's actually passing really well. Two assists per game over his last three. in traffic. Cook on the offensive glass has it knocked away by Conway. Georgetown will control underneath their own hoop. Rick will go very deep into his bench. He'll play 11 guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a bus stop. Indeed. The way John Thompson used to play it back in the day. <laughs> right. We had more dead ball situations when Big John was coaching than ever. There's Epps on a straight line drive. But it comes off the heel, and here comes Jenkins the other way. Ledlam is a guy that can pick up some loose change for you inside. Strong complimentary player. Jenkins. The nylon song from downtown. And Dennis Jenkins shooting 35% from three, but 39% in Big East play. She did really well. Well, that didn't take long. Some pressure on the inbounds pass. Didn't want to turn it over. So they quickly get the timeout. You have to always be thinking when you are playing against this St. John's team because even though you Jenkins knocks down that three there. All of a sudden, you get a little loose with it on your inbounds. <laughs> you don't get guys coming back to the basketball, and it leads to you having to take a quick timeout. That's exactly what happened on that possession. This is a series that goes all the way back to 1909. And when you consider the Big East formation and historically what these two proud programs meant to the initial Big East when Dave Gavitt formed the league back in 79, it's interesting to note that Lou Conaseca, the 99-year-old legend that is St. John's basketball, began his career coaching against Georgetown in December of 1965. He won the game in D.C. It was a close game, came out of there with a win, and here he is at 99, able to watch Rick Patino, who, by the way, uh, he did not speak very favorably of when Rick was at really? Providence years oh, ago. Oh, no, I didn't know that. He and Rolly Massimino can only agree on one thing, their collective disdain for young Rick Patino. <laughs> I've joked with Rick about that, and now here's here's Rick uh, at, um, I think some might say, the twilight years of his coaching career, mm -hmm. although he coaches unlike anyone that's 
that yes. deep into his career yes. that has become best buds with little Louie. How about that? At age 99. There's the time. <laughs> <laughs> Some wisdom. Yes. There's Supreme Cook in the painted area, and another whistle and a foul spotted by Brian O'Connell. It goes be, against Sean Conway. Timothy, that's worked really well for Georgetown in their last game where they overloaded the left side of the floor, which left an empty side ball screen situation that Jake Epps and Supreme Cook were able to take advantage of. They've got to do a lot more of that here on the road. Again, they get the deflection, and Jaden Epps was the last to touch it. And Dennis Jenkins. Yeah, St. John's does a great job of stunting at the basketball, and as soon as you feel that stunt, you've got to make that pass. Held on to it too long and turned it over. Good defense there by St. John's. Georgetown is 0 for 2, and have turned it over a couple of times. That three ball won't fall for Dingle, who's really been scorching the nest mm -hmm. of late during this four-game win streak. Taking some of the pressure off Dana Jenkins. And inside Cook, intimidated by Soriano that time. Yeah, I thought Supreme Kick should have gone up quickly with that one before Soriano could react. But it looked too late. Ooh, dribble handoff. Conway takes the errant pass. One extra pass to Soriano, but he can't connect. Tries to get it back, lost sight of it, and Cook hits the deck, and he'll protect it on the tie ball with the arrow to St. John's, but Ed Cooley loves the hustle defensively there. He needs to see more of that. He's looking for toughness. He wants these guys to get down and yes. dirty, and to this point, they just haven't been dirty enough for Ed. Yeah, as we talked to him about Supreme Cook, Supreme Cook brings it each and every night, being undersized at 6'9 at the center spot, and it's he who is diving on the floor trying to come up with that extra possession. How about that split of the double team? Oh, yeah! Falling baseline! Jenkins! Oh. That's why the young man from Iona came with Rick Patino. Over to St. John's. Uh, he splits that, and you can't allow. Anytime you double team the basketball, you cannot allow a guy to split because now all of a sudden you have numbers 5 1 3 on the back side, and Danis Jenkins read it beautifully to stay to his right side, able to absorb that contact, and in. That was a tough, wrong leg, off balance shot. Indeed. Rumbaugh picked up the foul, and the Johnnies pitching a shutout three minutes deep. And a reach-in foul, a little too physical that time. They were getting ready for that inbounds pass. Yeah, Dontre Styles, number zero in blue. He and Supreme Cook, 24 in blue, are going to have to make sure that they avail themselves to the basketball to take some of that pressure off of their guards. Dingle got the foul. And Rick Patino will always bring some full-court pressure mm -hmm. at any point in time. Uh, Dingle just got a little overly aggressive. Boy is now three misses, all of them right at the rim. They've not triggered one from deep as yet. If Brumbach should have made that pass, Supreme Cook was wide open with two feet in the paint. And now loses his dribble. Mm -hmm. That just sort of sums up the Georgetown season thus far. Each player trying to, to get to know one another. And yes. A little late here, a little late there, mm -hmm. and that creates doubt. Yeah, and, and, and Timmy B, the, it's open and there. The reads are just so slow. And if Georgetown wants to have a chance to win this game on the road, they've got to be much quicker with their decisions. You go back three weeks, remember St. John's had a big lead in that game. Mm -hmm. The bugaboo on them when they were struggling was that they couldn't hold it. a lead. As you see, another little runner fade away from Dana Jenkins. And it's clear he's feeling it today, and that is not good news for Georgetown. Jenkins eight, Georgetown nothing. He's got them all for the Red Storm. Styles trying to get a bounce pass entry in there and it's taken away by Dingle. Oh, nice look. That was a pass all the way to Soriano. Beautifully done by Dingle. Draping a dime. Pre-Big East tournament time. And another giveaway by Jenkins. So he and Dingle pick up a few early fouls. 
that were not necessary. And that'll raise the ire of Patino just a bit. Yeah, Dennis Jenkins on a six split, able to get an and one opportunity there. And then a nice little pass underneath. What patience and balance by Joel Soriano. St. John's up to a great start. Okay, when you turn around, you're going to see some more. Attention from the New York press and by some of the fans. There were even those that suggested that uh, the AAU coaches would probably have some problems. He'll have to mend a few fences moving forward. As you see, Masood knocking it down. But there's always a method to the maestro's madness. And I believe we've seen that come to fruition, Pogs. Well, I think it was two things. He's recognizing that they don't have the requisite foot speed to be able to keep guys in front. And that's okay. When you have that, you got to be willing to cover for each other. And the difference that I've seen as Dingle knocks one off the glass, the difference I've seen in this team over the last four games is they're doing a terrific job of covering for one another. You get beat, guys rotating. The second rotation has taken place. And so he's certainly got their attention. Jordan Dingle has picked up from an offensive standpoint since that time mm -hmm. and while defense was an issue for Rick which led to that as he suggested not tirade but just honesty and transparency his offense has come along at the same time and I think Dingle is the greatest example of that is from a 12-3 standpoint they've got the lead and Masood, as you mentioned, is a stretch player. They're going to need him to do more of this. Well, they decided to start in the day, and Coach Cooley wanted to get him involved early and often, and he's able to get a little release action there where he's able early and often, and he's able to get a little release action there where he's able to get a wide open look. And if he can knock down some threes, it opens up the lane for Jake Epps to be able to get penetration to the lanes, and they certainly need that against this tough St. John's defense. A strong move to the hoop by Fielder, the 6'10 freshman out of Boise, Idaho, through the Southern California Academy with a nice move there using the window. Yeah, 6'10 pick and pop big, but what he's doing a great job of is he's using his threat as a shooter to be able to get guys off balance and able to drive through the rim. That's really well executed. That's Drew Fielder, 6'10", 216-pound freshman, shooting 38% from three, so you got to honor him. And when you do that, he's doing a much better job of driving closeouts. I've been really impressed with his play as of late. He had a quality performance against Providence in the loss, 10 points on 14 shooting. Soriano steps out. That's normally a good spot for him, and he's a little upset he didn't make that one. Nice. Well, Masood wide open for a catch and shoot. Soriano to make pulls it down. Pardon, he's going to have to make those open shots this afternoon because there's not, you usually don't get a lot of them against this St. John's defense. Naheem Ali. You know it's going to go up when he gets it. Soriano on the offensive boards and draws the contact and will get to the line. And it's 6'11, 255 pounds. He's just too strong on the interior for Drew Fielder. Just knocks him out of the way and able to come up with that offensive rebound. An opportunity for two free throws here. Well, Soriano has struggled a little bit of late from an offensive standpoint, but he's certainly been outstanding on the boards, and that's what they need for him to be doing on a consistent basis. You figure the shooting will come along for Joel. 13 double-doubles, second in the Big East to only Baylor. Baylor Shireman of Creighton, who I believe has a very good chance of being the Big East player of the year. Uh, those are Joel Soriano's numbers. Got off to a great start at 17 points a game. Last 13, only 11. And when you go in those slumps, you got to be willing to do the other things. And he's been continuing to rebound the basketball at a very high clip at nine rebounds a game. And he's been blocking shots as well with two shot blocks per game. So yeah. he's not allowed his missing shots to impact him in the other areas of the game. Yeah, 0 for 4 at the line already today. And that is problematic. And we can see the frustration. Simeon Wilcher just into the game picks up that foul. Rick is going to get him out briefly and get uh, Zuby Edgefor into the game. The transfer from Kansas out of Garland, Texas. Epps working on the youngster Wilcher. Looking for young, talented St. John's players that they can build on. It's that kid, number seven. And again, a little too aggressive. With that reason, he'll pick up the second foul in, gosh, less than a minute's time. So 
Daniel Jenkins is going to have to come in for him. Very little playing time for Wiltshire before he has to sit. Yeah, Jay Knapp, so smart, number 10 in blue, knowing that the younger freshman is going to hold as he's going over those cuts. <laughs> That's just a smart point guard right there. Wayne Bristol is coming to the game for Georgetown. Along Jay Heath as well, and from deep, Heath knocks it down. He's a senior, and a guy that will be counting on as we approach the second season here in New York in the Big East tournament, set to begin on Wednesday afternoon. Strong baseline move. Let's see if they grant the basket. Jenkins got it up. Yep, count it. And a foul. Jenkins is an absolute blur with the basketball. He does a great job on his attacks to get you moving backwards. And all of a sudden, Epps put his hand out there and he's able to pull up through that contact. An opportunity for a three-point play. Well done by Davis Jenkins. A scintillating start for Danis, averaging 14 and a half mm -hmm. on the season. He's got more than half of the Johnny's points here at the outset. So there'll be three guys have to step up and make shots today for Georgetown. Dontre Spiles, Jay Heath, Ismasoud. Jay Heath knocked down the three. Ismasoud has made one, but Dontre Spiles, number zero on blue, has got to get involved in this game. On the switch, a blow by, and it's rejected by R.J. Lewis. Retrieved by the Hoyas. They only have one on the shot clock, and they lost sight of that. That's just a simple matter of basketball IQ. Epps got the ball, failed to understand that after the ball was blocked, the shot clock had uh, not relocated. No, it would never touch the rim, so you got to get the ball back up on the 10 as quickly as possible. Must be aware of the shot clock at all times when you have the basketball. Missed opportunity there by Georgetown. Well, another example, I think, of a lack of a four leader for the Hoyas here for Ed Cooley in his first year. Look, there's some really solid individual talent, mm -hmm. but as you build a program, it's necessary to have that, that guy that can be your glue, your leader. Ideally, you want it to be a point guard, sure. but it could be somebody else. And that's what he's searching for, and no doubt, Listen, his greatest attribute is his people skills. He's going to get outstanding talent. It's only a matter of time. And for all those who've been kind of feasting on Georgetown Hoyer basketball as of late, yeah. uh, get your licks in now. <laughs> yeah. Because Ed Cooley's going to have horses going forward and change the entire narrative of the Georgetown Hoyers. The biggest difference he faces, Lafonso, in my mind, versus Patino in his first year, when you're rebuilding at St. John's, the one aspect you don't have to concern yourself with is apathy. They've got plenty of fans here that care. Mm -hmm. And they'll let you know how much they care sure. really soon. Just ask any of the coaches that have come and gone. <laughs> right. But but at Georgetown, he's fighting apathy. Mm -hmm. Apathy that's been created over time. And that makes it a little more difficult to get the kind of people you want through the portal and in recruiting. Yeah, and, and yet... The brass really wants to win and win soon. He's got the buy-in from all of the former Georgetown Hoya players. He's been active with getting all of them involved, and he's recruiting at a high level. Those are the three things that are the bedrock of your program, oh, yeah. and he's yeah. off to a tremendous start there. So many things going well that you just do not see on yes. the floor at this stage. Timeout, 11.37. Remaining here in the opening half. Johnny's have only turned it over once. These are the faces looking to go places as we march in the month of March on Fox. Carendia presents the ABCs of CKD. A is for awareness because knowing that your chronic kidney disease and type 2 diabetes could progress. Program brought in the likes of Craig Smith, many, many others, and there you see the job he did. At both of those stops, and again, you know, he brought a title to Providence. Regular season and Big East tournament title. It was his home. I think a lot of people felt he might never leave, that it was his dream job. But you know what? Building is in his DNA. Let's go in the huddle right now. 
You got to be strong with the ball. Just because you don't know it, that'll make you take a bad shot. Your job is to get everybody a shot. Then you drive, kick, score, two feet, bounce pass. That's the job of the point guard. Man, you can hear him saying it. He wants his team to be more physical, to be stronger with the basketball, to not get into this pressure of St. John's. And for the young Brumball, his point guard, he wants them to be a playmaker to get everyone else involved. Boy, most of St. John's fouls are coming on inbounds yes. passes. That's two mm -hmm. on Dingle. Danis Jenkins has picked up a couple, too. Now they're in the bonus. Yeah, now in the bonus, only one starter on the floor for the Hoyas, and that's Brumball. You know, just listening, though, to that huddle, mm -hmm. Lavonzo, he's having to coach some aspects of the game that Rick Pitino isn't right now. Having to point out what the responsibilities are to your individual players sure. in the month of March, <laughs> right. that should tell you sort of where they are versus where some other teams are at this stage. Well, and Coach Pete Pitino had the benefit of having Danish Jenkins, his point guard at Iona, come over with him, who knows everything that his coach wants from him offensively and wants on the defensive end, yeah. and he can be your coach on the floor, as most coaches want to have the coach on the floor being their point guard. So very different scenarios yes. for the two coaches. And by the way, much was made when some of his outstanding backcourt talent, and even if Include maybe even A.J. Storr in that group mm -hmm. transferred to Wisconsin. So many of them have done well, whether it's Xavier or Butler or mm -hmm. or at Wisconsin. But Danis Jenkins was a proven commodity for him. That was a lob. <laughs> Almost went in by Jenkins. He was trying to get that to Lewis on a lob, and it actually went crying off the front iron. It's one thing I... I love several things about Danish Jenkins, but makes a little mistake there, doesn't give up on the play, and able to tap that one out of bounds to take away what have been a pretty easy layup for Georgetown. Soriano back on the floor, as you four sits down. Jay Heath, who's more of a scoring backcourt player. That's the issue. More of these guys are scorers than they are distributors. In the end, you go back to your instinct. Soriano deflected that one. Pulled out of there by Ludlam. And to your point, Jaden Epps' instinct is to score the basketball. Yet Supreme Cook had a little guard on him down on the interior. That ball should have gone inside. Another missed opportunity for Georgetown. Lewis is stripped. Nice, nicely done by Epps. Tie ball with the arrow to Georgetown. Oh, Soriano doing a really nice job of keeping Jaden Epps contained and I thought Jaden Epps missed an opportunity to get it to Supreme Cook inside who had a point guard on him on the interior. Yeah, you'd think with that that big on you, you might want to blow by, and right? Drive him, yeah. The decision making for Georgetown on the offensive end is going to have to improve if they're hoping to get a win on the road. I'll take a win any way they can get it, <laughs> right? Been a long dry spell. He, he can score. He's a flat out scorer. Was at BC and his brief time at Arizona State. 36% on the year, but 46% on 12 and 26 over his last six games. He's been stroking it from three. Oh, Jenkins with a little French pastry went behind the back on that pass to Lewis. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be St. John's underneath their own roof. Yeah, Jay Heath's one of those guys that if he misses a shot, he tends to put his head down. But when he can get it going on the offensive end, man, it opens up space. He's a creative off the dribble. And when he starts knocking down that three ball, now it opens up the lane for him to be able to dribble drive. And they needed to penetrate that tough half court defense of St. John's. Aline, the Connecticut transfer, searching for his shot right here. Well defended, and it leads to a turnover. He did a number on him. Aline really did just search for his shot. He was looking for no one on that dribble drive. And a quick timeout, 30-second timeout for St. John's. Pardon, I wish you could see how Coach Rick Pitino is staring him down <laughs> as he's coming over to the bench. Right. Yeah. Which means having to play four in a row in the biggest <laughs> tournament. And, and to the bench, you know, uh, none of that matters if they lose to Georgetown today. That's right. <laughs> You've got to get it done yes. when you hit the floor this time of year. Well, the last five minutes... 
Five points, four turnovers for St. John's after a pretty solid start. 12 points and no turnovers in the first five minutes. Halfway through the first 20 in New York. Great pass that time on the drive by Heath and the flush from Supreme Cook. And the two threes that Jay Heath made opened up the lane for dribble penetration for him, and he made a terrific decision once he got in the lane. Well, that's going to be a hold. Galeen was making that pass. Supreme Cook picks up his second. Folks, look at Jay Heath here. He's got a big one on him, decides to drive that basketball, and all of a sudden, they're late coming over, taking away Supreme Cook, and he finishes inside. Great decision by Heath. Ledlam just went to, took advantage of Georgetown, who fell asleep off a typical inbounds play. And again, full court pressure after the made basket. And get it over. Yes, you do. You better hurry. And he does. Georgetown has had more fluidity since mm -hmm. he came in, don't you think? Much more ball and body movement. Yeah. And a great drive to the basket using the glass, Jade Nips. That looked a little like some of the things he did at Illinois mm -hmm. back in the day. Ledlam, that's his game right there. Told you before the game, he reminds old Big Easters will remember this name, Howard Trish of Syracuse. <laughs> Syracuse yeah. Remember that guy? Very similar player. Oh, another fantastic drive. Go down, beat the team in defensive transition, and Epps did. And it's 21 to 19. Yeah, Jaden Epps has to continue to use his speed to get in the lane. And when they don't come and help, he's got to finish at the front. He draws two, he's got a kick. Good decision by him there. Beautiful drive again by Glenn Taylor Jr., but he couldn't get the finish. Styles with Styles. So far, to me, be each of those three guys that we talked about. This machine, Jay Heath, Dontrez style, have each knocked down the three. That's a bit positive for the Hoyas. First lead for Georgetown. The Hoyas trailed 10 0 to open this game. Now, this has been all too typical for St. John's. Get a nice lead, mm -hmm. and then it evaporates. Yes. Now everyone's standing around, balls on the same side. Aline says, I got an open jumper, and I think I'll take it. Very fortunate to make that one. Yeah, see, Heath was late to get there, yes. and Ed Cooley letting him know with his own version of a Patino stare. 24-22 St. John's. Listen, it's a long ways away from the great rivalries that these two had, but Georgetown is still Georgetown to these fans. And you wouldn't know about the energy in this building. No, today. you wouldn't. Miles trying to go inside is rejected. Ledlam was there to get Taylor help. Jenkins pulls up. Oh, the iron untanged, but a foul. Oh, the pace is picking up, Patsy. Yes, I like it. Yeah. Some old Big East rivals on Fox today. Yeah! Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Here at the Mecca. Oh, isn't she lovely? Girl dads, I'm one. Unite. 24-22. Yes. St. John's with the lead. Georgetown took an early punch down 10 and regathered, got themselves a lead. St. John's trying to bounce back and take control of the game. Let's go in the huddle of Rick Patino. Joel, 10 feet off the coast, okay? Now look, we are out of the press. You're getting nothing out of it. Your denial's no good. But I want the same pressure in the half court. Those switches there when they come out is guard to guard. Talk early. You may pick it off, okay? That's a good one. 
Yeah, the half court, a lot of guard to guard screens that are being taken, that are taking place by Georgetown. You should switch those actions and maybe they'll be able to get a steal. But this is what it's about today. St. John's put themselves in really good position. Net of 37, strength of schedule 26, and the second best conference uh, in the country in the Big East. They had some terrific wins, including one recently against Creighton at home and then Butler on the road. Yep. And I think if they can win this game today, it puts them in great position, and I think they're in the tournament. I would agree. And by the way, that early bad loss now mm -hmm. to Michigan was before we knew yes. just how bad it was going to be <laughs> yes. for Michigan. And you could argue that St. John's was in a similar position back in December mm -hmm. that this Georgetown team was in. The difference is they have evolved. Yes. I mean, in, in and a I couple of times. Credit for it. Yeah. And I think they'll be rewarded for it. Not to mention the Patino factor. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> question. Just won two national yeah. championships. And as I said earlier, if they're going to be an 11 seed, yeah. I would not want to be a 6 seed seeing yeah. those guys in the first round of the NCAA tournament. His teams are never going to have a problem reinventing them themselves yeah. because he's never had a problem, right, reinventing himself. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was leaving the Boston Celtics uh, a year away, going to Louisville, the issues there, then finding himself coaching outside the United States, going through exile, really, yes. before being hired at Iona. And now here he is at St. John's. Epps, beautiful leaner in the lane, and it's 26 to 24. Epps has done a beautiful job using his speed to get in the lane and has been making really good decisions once he's gotten there. Taylor was looking for a cutter, but it was well defended. Epps is shadowing Jenkins. Taylor needs some help. There's a cut by Aline. Taylor gets it back and launches. Really good defensive possession there. Jaden Epps did a really nice job of coming over, taking away that sink spot. Georgetown, really good defensive possession. And I'll tell you what, Timmy B, it's been the three-point line. 16 of their 24 points have come from three. Well, look, if this game progresses, LaFonzo, Georgetown is playing with no pressure, mm -hmm. none. St. John's has plenty. Yeah, they cannot afford a loss. And look at that rainbow jay from way downtown by Epps. Length of the floor. That one gets an easy one. And that drives Ed crazy. The <laughs> floor has to remain balanced after a big-time shot. Boy is now 5 of 7 from downtown to help them get back in this game, and they trail by one. Yeah, when the point guard takes a shot, it's the two guards' responsibility to get back, and no one back for Georgetown. They've got to continue to spread the floor and drive it. Jenkins has 13 now. Four field goal attempts. Here he comes again. Oh, and a final opportunity for a flush by Edgefor. Sadly, he, Edge couldn't. And he'll get to the free throw line. I see what you did right there. <laughs> Styles picks up the foul. Yeah, big man running the floor. Zuby Edge for excellent athlete. A little contact there by Dontre Styles. That's a good call by the official. And that's what he brings to the floor. He's a tremendous floor runner. Terrific athlete. Block shots. He brings great energy off the bench for the Red Storm. Their look is different when Soriano leaves and Edge of Four arrives. Mm -hmm. They become more of a 94-foot style of team. Yeah. He's obviously a, a four, mm -hmm. nothing more. Cannot play really a true five position. Dunlap, the outstanding sharpshooter out of uh, Harvard-Westlake. New Hall, California comes into the game, number 44. And Edge of Four at the strike. And Zuby Edge of Four is going to be a really good player for the next couple of years for the Red Storm. Yeah, two more years of eligibility after coming over from Kansas. St. John's by three with five to play in the opening half. Tough pass. Yes. Knocked away wisely by Dunlap. But it was deflected out by Georgetown, but he disrupted that play. Yeah, that's really on Masood, though, because he left his position just at the left side of the three-point line up high. If he would have held his position, he's been wide open for a three. Too much traffic on that side. Beautiful defensive play on the flight. Jenkins wanted a foul on that reach belt that he had gotten him on the arm, Epps, but 
to no avail. Dave Epps has made some really good defensive plays yeah. that time directly on the basketball and two possessions before yeah. his rotation <laughs> took away a drive. Yeah, he certainly got it with the arm. And the hometown fans from the five boroughs <laughs> running this experience this to visit New York. Well. This is New York, the Knickerbockers, <laughs> old school basketball. That's not a foul, that's a play on. <laughs> The baseline was wide open. No one came over to help, and Epps uses the glass nicely. To me, what's happening is they're supposed to make him use that screen, and he's just turning it down and just driving to the baseline. As he the two feet in the paint, over the finish over the top. Now well, you see the dexterity in Zuby's game right there. Just easily went to the left hand after that entry pass from Taylor. Epps working on Jenkins. Uh, he sees an opportunity to just put it on the deck and have some straight line drives. Since last time these two teams played, Zayden Epps had 31 blitz to this game. Dunlap is in there for just that reason. He'll probably get two more quality looks. And if he cans one of them, he might get five or six more minutes of playing time. <laughs> right? Epps has it slapped away by Taylor. His length really matters. Jenkins has got some of that length as well. Got clock at two. It's got to go up. Taylor the rebound. Yeah. Lynn Taylor Jr. has given them some energy, mm -hmm. hasn't he, since coming in? So there has. Ledlam turns it over. Epps going the distance. Really knew he wasn't going to make the shot, but if I put it on the backboard, I'll just let the big fella go get it and put it back. And yeah, really nice job from Drew Fielder not giving up on the play and continue to run to come up with that offensive rebound put back. Yeah, he'll be lobbying the official score for an assist on that one. Taylor, count it. Well, Jaden Epps is absolutely exhausted. He, number 10 and three, he's been pulling on his jersey, asking for them to take him out. They went to that little zone there, and it was his rotation to get there. Didn't have the energy to get there. <laughs> St. John's made him pay. I think Ed Cooley's looking like, hey, you got two more minutes, kid. <laughs> Give me two more solid minutes. You get all the rest you want. It has to Johnny's by a deuce with a deuce to play. In the opening half. And just so you know, we, we former players, we're never tired on offense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Masood comes up empty again from deep. It's out of bounds to Georgetown. Don't you think this was an assist? He knew he wasn't going to make this layup. It, it looks right? that way. Don't you think? Yeah, Drew Tell Field. Tell me something. Is, come on now. Drew Field out continuing to run, not giving up on the play, and able to tip dunk that bad boy in. And then <laughs> Glenn Taylor Jr. wide open for a three and knocks it down. I was a Numbers move you, but some can stop you in your tracks, like the tens of thousands of people who were diagnosed with certain HPV-related cancers. For most people, HPV clears on its own. But for those who don't clear the virus, it can cause certain cancers. Gardasil 9 is a vaccine given to adults through age 45 that can help protect against certain diseases caused by HPV, including cervical, vaginal, vulvar, anal, and certain head and neck cancers, such as throat and back of mouth cancers and genital warts. Gardasil 9 doesn't protect everyone and does not treat cancer or HPV infection. Your doctor may recommend screening for certain HPV-related cancers. Women still need routine cervical cancer screenings. You shouldn't get Gardasil 9 if you've had an allergic reaction to the vaccine, its ingredients, or are allergic to yeast. Tell your doctor if you have a weakened immune system, are pregnant, or plan to be. The most common side effects include injection site reactions, headache, fever, nausea, dizziness, tiredness, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and sore throat. Fainting can also happen. Help protect what counts. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about Gardasil 9. Every March, Jersey Mike's turns money from subs into charitable donations. And March 27th is Jersey Mike's annual day of giving, where 100% of sales from every sub are given back to the community. Join us for Jersey Mike's Day of Giving. Be a sub above. I love your dress. Oh, thanks. I splurged a little because Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know, right? I've been telling everyone. Liberty. <gasps> Did you hear that? So I just said her first word. Can you say mama? Liberty. Can you say auntie? Liberty. 
How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. Every Jersey Mike sub is sliced and stacked right in front of you since 1956. You slice, I snack. I said slice and stack. Tomato, tomato. It's tomato. Freshly sliced since 1956. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Rob Stowe with you coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. Number 16, Alabama, looks to snap out of a funk. Memphis, they need every win they can get for their tournament resume. Plus, we'll look ahead to Creighton and Nova. What's the one thing the Cats have to have? Tim, LaFonso, I hear it's lunchtime in MSG. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to argue it's better than the avocado room that you have uh, on Rico. <laughs> Pico, Rob Stone, what is, what is it with all this, Fon? Yeah, so, well, mean, Timmy B, look, I, I know you're down 55 pounds, buddy, yeah. but look, food always finds Fonz. It does so, find the Fonz, yes. doesn't it? Carnegie Deli, one of the Ooh, most yes. popular delis yeah. in the country, just hooked us up with a little corned beef on rye. Let, and far be it for me not ahead. to partake in this, do Timmy it. B, because my family from Long Island and uh, upstate New York, and uh -huh. they'd be very proud of this. But I want to thank everyone, all of the vendors <laughs> here at the Square Garden for providing this for us. This is absolutely fantastic. And let me let me, let me go ahead. And Don't this. try this on the air, young broadcasters. It's really not polite to eat on the air. But he's been doing it for so long that I can't stop him. By the way, you do need to feed and fan the big fella. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that for the next one minute and 52 seconds <laughs> with the Fonz. Can you handle this? A little runner from Jenkins? Mm-hmm. <laughs> A lot of ooh -hoo coming from Lafonso. This is actually good for a guy that likes to talk like me. I get to handle replays now. Mm. <laughs> Jaden Epps mm -hmm. getting the job done as they go from end to end. And I thought, tell you, Georgetown's one-on-one -on -one capability has been on display during this run. After falling behind 10 to nothing, Epps has been the equal of Jenkins lately. Absolutely. What's happened is Georgetown's been able to knock down some threes, and that's opened up driving lanes for them to be able to attack. 15 of their 33 points have come from the three-point line. But most importantly, how was that sandwich yeah. there, Timmy? I don't know. I, didn't, I couldn't take a bite. You were too busy eating, and oh, I had to on. take the replay. Well, it's your turn. Yeah. Listen, I, we did spend some time, I know, mm -hmm. in the studio a couple of weeks back. Sure. I was working a game, and you were there. Did they treat you right? Did you get some good food? Oh, they treated me beautifully. Okay, good. Glad to hear it. There is a defensive play on the inbounds by Lewis. Short-armed the shot in the lane, and it's pulled down by the Hoyas. Rumbaugh has gotten off to a sluggish start. They actually picked up when he took it to the pine, and he came in to operate at the point. Now they're both in simultaneously. And Bristol also on the floor. As they go small, that leaner won't fall. Loose ball to Masood and a reach in foul against Taylor. What was happening now is Georgetown's a little quicker to the basketball than St. John's. And they're just lining guys up and driving them off the dribble. No move made. And that was one of the issues that Coach Patino talked about. He talked about the lack of lateral speed. Well, that's showing up here because all Georgetown's doing is they're lining them up and driving them. They're forcing them to help. And if they don't help, they're going to score. When they do help, they're looking to kick the basketball. You know, you think of um, Ishmael Massoud, and mm -hmm. this is a kid that's had a couple of moments in the NCAAs yeah. in the spotlight. You know, for Kansas State, he hit a clutch three, and they went over Kentucky, then went four of six, and uh, had 15 big points when they defeated Michigan State to get to the Sweet 16. I mean, he's had some moments, but he's got to have someone help him yes. set, set those shots up, right? Yeah, and the more the guards of Georgetown can get in the lane and make plays, the more to open up opportunities for him to get some shots on the perimeter. Now, the double team came late. Soriano fouled, and he'll get to the free throw line. That picks up number two. And Soriano, whose struggles at the free throw line mm -hmm. have been plentiful in the first half. He needs to grow in confidence at the strike. Yeah, he's got a nice looking stroke too. He does. Do. It's, uh, I think it's gotten mental with him. Mm -hmm. That's a big one for, for him to drop. He missed his first four at the free throw line. St. John's has gotten to the line a lot more than Georgetown. Something I'm sure Cooley will discuss with the officials on his way to the locker room at halftime. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, Joel is generally going to get front lines in foul difficulty. Well, that shot looked nothing like mm -hmm. the first one. Yeah, a little hitch in that one. Rolled off the right side of his hand. That's five misses at the line for him in the opening half. Oh, beautiful play by Aline. He had it deflected almost to steal to close out the half. Only seven on the shot clock, though. Epps knows. Soriano got in the way. It's a really nice job by Glenn Taylor, Jr., number 35 in white, keeping the ball in front and then contesting late. He's brought a lot of energy yes. to the floor since coming in for Patino. Now you see the shot clock, game clock differential, only a second. So essentially they'll hold it for one here. Aline initiates and calls his own number. Taking his time there. If Providence happens to pull it off, yeah. okay, and win tonight against Connecticut, sure. we could be seeing these same two teams about that? Wow. on Wednesday. Wow. The Johnnies are hoping to move up and get that extra day of rest and play in the 4 5 game. But first things first, they need to win here yes. before hoping for any help from Villanova or Providence later today. Can it be you calling those games, right? Yeah, if you I'll need be to come with the red hook up, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the hash? I hope not. <laughs> Dingle can't get that one to go, and it's taken down off of the deck. Epps gets it into the hands of Rumbaugh. Yeah, Jaden Epps was extraordinary in that first half, had 13 points, but not only that, it was his defense, had four steals as well. Going to need that kind of Herculean effort from here in the second half if they want to pull off the upset on the road. And to think he was scoreless in the first 11 minutes. Mm -hmm. At all 13 in the last nine of the first half. Softly it goes down for Supreme Hook. I didn't think he got enough touches in the first half. And what a nice read there because Soriano was expecting him to bump him, but just open up against the bigger player, shoot the soft shot. He's extremely athletic mm -hmm. and versatile in this game. He was the first of the five taken out of the portal. And that pass a little too long and high for Soriano to corral. Was touched though by Georgetown, so St. John's will have it with 15 on the shot clock. Ledlam. First trade for Ledlam today. Only 29% on the year, but over the last four games, he's been knocking that thing down 43% from the three-point line. He looked very comfortable on that one. Yeah, he and Dingle have been the two guys that ignited their offense mm -hmm. after the brouhaha post Hall that Patino had. There's another strong straight line drive, which has really been the offense for Georgetown, but lost it on the way up, and it's a turnover. Yeah, because he's a poor shooter. It's really been the offense for Georgetown, but lost it on the way up, and it's a turnover. Yeah, because he's a poor shooter. They were wanting to give him that open shot, but you can't embarrass someone. That was a late closeout, and Chris Ledlin made them pay. Conway, by the way, back on the floor for the Johnnies to open the second half. Huge 20 minutes here for the Red Storm. Jenkins uses the window pane, and they extend their lead to seven. He was so good with that little stop and pop. That's really the strength of his game. That little 12 to 15 foot jump shot, he is automatic. And dribble handoff to Epps after the pick. And again, Soliano challenged that time, and a foul the end result, Joel, not particularly pleased with Jeffrey Clark's ball. Dana Jenkins, a little hesitation dribble, opened up that gap for him to be able to attack to his right, and a little late coming over was Masood, and he is so good off the dribble, whether it's all the way to the rim, that little short pop, stop and pop, 
pull up Jay of his. He never goes too deep, Tim, Timmy B. I love his decision making with the rock. I want to give Soriano some senior props, All right? Mm -hmm. He knew that Jeffrey Clark overheard what we used to say back in the day when a player was disgruntled. We used to hear from our coaches about it. They called it the mother grubs. <laughs> <laughs> they called it the, the days. Days. mother guys. Like he's just upset about this, right. Event, right? And he knew that Clark had hurt him because he looked back. He went right over during the dead ball as they were sending him with the free throws to make it all good <laughs> with the federal <laughs> official. <laughs> he's, he's been around for a little while. Yes, right? indeed. Barely made it over. A little southern colloquialism for the Big East. I there. like it. I like athletes it. back in the day. Yes. <laughs> Timmy B, I love what Georgetown is doing here. They're giving St. John's different looks defensively. And sometimes they're playing man-to-man, -man, other times full-court pressure back into that zone. And they're going to tr try to do their best to keep St. John's off balance when they're on the defensive end. Jenkins almost lost his dribble as he looked ahead, trying to find a cutter. Now he wants to do it on his own. That's a tough fadeaway. Great work defensively. But how about that save by Levlin? That's what Levlin does to create a second opportunity. We call him a bit of a garbage guy. You know, they, they get a whistle to stop playing and a foul. But Levlin saved that beautifully to give them another look. Cook got the foul, his third, which bails out this possession for St. John. He's just a good position player. Dingle can't get it to go. Cook the rebound. Nice split of the double team by Epps. Gotta make those. Miles couldn't get it to go. He was wide open. Ooh. Lob inside for Soriano. A little too strong, but Ledlam runs it down again, but this time throws it towards the opposition hoop. Look at rejection by Davis. Oh, the Georgetown with another opportunity. And a putback for Supreme Cook. Supreme Cook, one of the best offensive rebounders in the Big East, never gives up on offensive possessions. Able to corral one, put one up and in to keep Georgetown close. That's a kick ball. This is a great defensive play by Jenkins, though, that did end up a Georgetown. Hoop. How about that athleticism? Yeah, huh? How about the timing? Look how high he got and how much he hung in the air to block that shot. That was pretty. I'll just tell you that sometimes mid majors get big time talent. Dana Jenkins, some thought, like, oh, guard for my own is going to play in the Big East. We talked earlier about how when you bring a double team, you can't, whether it be on the perimeter or the post, you cannot allow a guy to split. Never am able to split that one inside. Soriano slipped. Oh, what a beautiful big to big pass, and Soriano finishes it inside. Fielder got the foul, his second. Chris Lebelum does some of everything for the St. John's team. He really team. does. He really does. I was a little surprised to see him save that ball full court. I don't know that he thought that he had thrown it that far when he was trying to save the second one. Soriano with just a second field goal. And a feathery touch on that free throw where he struggled today. The lead back up to six with four minutes gone here in the second. Tim Brando, Lafonso Ellis here on Fox. Happy to have you with us. Got to put Soriano in ball screens or hand off situations. Nice. Yep. Created an opening. Fielder right back to Brumbaugh. And Brumbaugh can't get it to go. Soriano blocks out beautifully. Quick I outlet. I thought Fielder should have taken that three. Good look for Taylor. Just a bit short. Again, you know where it's going. When he gets it, Styles with some style. On the dribble drive. I see what you did there. Well, you're keeping up. I like that. <laughs> Dingle. Oh! The iron tantalizingly untimed. But a foul spotted by Clark. It'll go against Ron Brumba. Well, right around the corner here in New York. Our entire Fox College basketball team. Clark. 
It'll go against Ron Brumbaugh. Uh, right around the corner here in New York, our entire Fox College basketball team will be here. And it all gets underway Wednesday on FS1. And Doug. Hello, Ghostbusters. It's Doug of Doug and Limu. We help people customize and save hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual. Anyway, we got a bit of a situation here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure, I can hold. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters March 22nd. Gosh, there's so many. Paul, this is... Paul, where'd you go? I can't find you. We're in home surrounded by uh, uh, vases. I'm still in lamps. Do you know if it's vases or vases? These prices, I'm going to get all of these. Uh, how are you still in lamps? How are you not? And now I'm in art. Well, now we're in plants. It's magical. I like abstract art. I don't get it, but I like it. Let's never leave. Introducing a new home collection. Discover it all at Kohl's. Investment opportunities are everywhere you turn. But at T-Row Price, we're letting curiosity light the way. Asking smart questions about opportunities like advances in healthcare and how these innovations will create a healthier world tomorrow. Better questions, better outcomes. I do anything. Hill Science Diet Puppy Food has the nutrients your pup needs. And now at PetSmart, get 4,000 treats points when you spend $50 or more on Hill Science Diet. Pet smart. Anything for pets. You ready? One bread maker, we gifted and ready to go. I don't even remember who got us the stupid thing. <laughs> I got you that stupid thing. Want to get away? Now you can with Southwest fares as low as $49 one way. Trayton takes on Villanova. Then Cam Jones and Ace Wink Marquette take on Zayden. And in prime time, second ranked UConn battles Providence. Can you believe it? It's a huge triple header today on Fox. You do remember, don't you? The grand old days of the Big East, the sweater game in 1985. At the time, it was the highest rated game ever on cable television. And did you realize that we are celebrating this season, Fonz, the 40th anniversary of that contentious final won by Georgetown, Big John and company, and the mighty Big East, the Johnnies were trying to get it done, Georgetown stood tall, <laughs> that 1984 game was very special. I don't think Beheim ever got over it. Sure. And then, of course, they went on to win the national title. John Coleman'sberger, old research man of mine, CBS years ago, sent me all these clippings with all these nuggets. He was uh, Howie Schwab protege, mm. and he said, Brando, if you got this game, you got to get all this stuff in. So I couldn't get it all in, JK. <laughs> but know this: uh, the history of this sport mm -hmm. and this league is extra special, and we've said it many times. But the currency of the college game is all about history, and there's so much of it here. And I would argue that the new Big East. Mm -hmm is now just as strong as it could possibly be since it was uh, reinvigorated and reconfigured yeah. in 2013. Well, they continue to go out and get well-established, terrific coaches, first yeah. and foremost. And when, they, and when those coaches come yeah. in, they recognize the importance of bringing back former players, yeah. of getting out in the community, reestablishing those connections, going out and finding all of those folks who graduated from their universities who are doing yeah. well for themselves and bring them back to get them involved and you know Rick Pitino's done it in his first year and we're looking at an Ed Cooley who's doing it behind the scenes and it's going to bear fruit starting next year no doubt about it and I think in many many ways mm -hmm. erasing some of that leaning on Big John's era yeah. is important because he's the kind of coach that can create his own monster. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you can harken back to the grand old days all you want, but at a certain point, you do have to address yes, where you are today yes. and where you're going forward, mm -hmm. and who better to do that than Ed Cooley? Absolutely. They found the right guy. Where history meets currency. 
That was a poor pass picked off by Wayne Bristol. And look at Jenkins scramble for the loose ball. And then he gets up and commits the travel. Rick knew it. Rick's well aware of it. Yeah, Coach Patino's just telling these guys to slow down yeah. a little bit. Jenkins done a nice job of coming up with that possession, but <laughs> clearly a travel. And he got caught up in the moment. Forgot that if you stand up, that's uh, travel. And Tim, I didn't have the privilege of playing in a conference when I was at Notre Dame. But right. We played against several biggie schools, including these two that I was really before. Played against the mighty Syracuse, and so. Yes. Talk about a stretch five. Mm -hmm. I thought he should have shot the one in the corner that he had earlier. Yeah. And a timeout by Patino. He got a little space and knew what to do. Well, get your butt kicked for a while in the Big East. You can take it out on them from downtown. <laughs> Old Trapper Beefs. Fake protein. Guys, can we take a quick protein break? Protein City. I got my beans, my bars, my goose, my glumps, my fizz. I don't know what that one is, but you want it? I'm good, man. I think Goop was a bad choice. Old Trap, what's your beef? Some of the most brilliant minds in business. No, not you. Or you. You. You auto track business income and expenses with QuickBooks. And you. You pay all your employees easily and accurately. And you have a business bank account with market leading APY. Get the full picture of your business on one platform. Now with expert help when you need it. That's how you business differently. Something amazing is happening here. Data is bringing creativity to life. That's because CDW showed animation studios new ways to maximize their infrastructure, then built a flexible Dell Technologies data solution. More automation led to greater efficiency, which means creativity stays the star of the show. Make amazing happen. Dell Technologies and CDW. Hey, Dad. I got an A in my book report. That's cool. And I went for a walk in the woods, and I didn't get a single flea or tick on me. You are just the best. Right? I'm great. <laughs> you are great. Brother. This flea and tick season, get 20% off your first pharmacy order at Chewy. Man, I wish I had 750 donuts like this sign says. It says $750, not donuts. What if each donut cost a dollar? I hate that you're kind of right. Switch to Progressive, and you could save hundreds. Again, a reminder, get ready for the Big East Tournament on Fox and FS1. Who will rise up in the world's most famous arena and take the conference crown? All tips off Wednesday on Fox and FS1. Right now, these are the matchups on day one. And let me just say this, Fonz, after doing conference tournaments elsewhere until 2020 was my first. Uh -huh. You can be doing a quarterfinal round game in this building. Yes. And it rocks like a championship game. I'll bet. I mean, it does. Because anybody can take you out. Yes. I mean, Patrick Ewing proved that in that COVID-related mm -hmm. tournament the following year in 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went from worst to first <laughs> and won his way uh, and Georgetown's way into a tournament bid in the NCAAs. And that Xavier Butler game, 8-9, is going oh, to be a fabulous game. No doubt about it. Michigan State transfer, Pierre Brooks to Butler is as a small forward, 6'6", oh. 240 pounds, bouncy, can stick it. Quincy Oliveri, uh, Xavier. Nice move that time by R.J. Lewis. If you think about those shin splints and all the injuries, the lack of practice time that Coach Patino talked to us about, he, he can still bring a lot of bounce and vim and vigor on the floor for St. John's. 52-46, Fielder again. Too much room given by Soriano. And again, we talked about it earlier with Fielder in the game. One 
get Soriano involved in ball screens and dribble handoffs, and he'll be able to get some open opportunities, and that's exactly what happened on that play. Hey, this is not going to be a cakewalk, folks. Georgetown's going to make him work for this one. You think you're inside the bubble, you're going to have to work hard to right. stay there. Epps. Ooh. Man. He's got a burst, doesn't he? He sure does. There was not a lot of arc on that shot, but he just willed mm -hmm. that ball through the cylinder. Six of 11 from the floor. This half the Hoyas. And they are not going anywhere. Yeah, I love what Ed Cooley's doing here. He's using Fielder to be able to set away screens and on ball screens. Here's an away screen that he sets a wide pin down. Soriano has to help create a little space to be able to knock down that three-point shot. Ed Cooley's drawing up some really cool stuff to get Soriano involved and to use him and to attack him, especially with Fielder on the floor. Well done by Georgetown. Listen. 12 of their 17 Big East losses have been by double digits, but there have been four or five games, at least, that could have gone their way and yeah. didn't. Yes. And one of those was against this St. John's team mm -hmm. that had a 17-point lead, blew it. They were within three with 43 seconds to play yes. in, the, in the last game, and then St. John's found a way to finish it off. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that was the night that... The Mayor Copa took place from Patino, and he apologized for effectively throwing his team under the bus. St. John's has been unable to put away today yeah. like they did that night. Yeah, and, and part of it has been Jaden Epps is having another huge game. He lit him up for 31 in the last game, and as we just said, Ed Cooley doing a really nice job of getting Soriano involved in ball screens and away screens, creating opportunities for his big man to knock down shots. Too strong for Jenkins, but Taylor gets the rebound and a recycle. Have to try to save it, so it would have been an over and back. Lewis, he decided to take it right to the rack. RJ with a payday. I love his game. When he gets a consistent three ball, he's going to be unguardable. He is dynamic off the dribble. Two second chance points. Boy, they'll eat you up if you're struggling on the glass. And Georgetown has at times this year. Oh, look at this. Fielder put it on the deck, showing you some dexterity when Lewis was a mismatch there. Yeah, what they're doing right now is, in that case, Soriano early on wasn't switching. Now they're switching that action and treating Drew Fielder more like a perimeter player. And he wisely, at 6'10", didn't panic, but tried to back R.J. Lewis down in the box. He's making some really good decisions, and he's only a freshman. First foul on Lewis. Ledlam will come in on the next dead ball. As we get a little closer to the under-12 timeout. Epps looking for Fielder. Illy buys pass. Leads to a breakout. Dingo! And he's hacked. Looking for the acrobatic shot. And we've got a timeout. R.J. Lewis, the sophomore from Miami, Florida, is dynamic off the bounce with UMass transfer. What a nasty little move inside St. John's up three. In the U.S., we see millions of cyber threats each year. That rate is increasing as more and more businesses move to the cloud. So the question is, as cyber companies expand their toolkit, we must expand as well. We need to rethink... Next Level Moments need the Next Level Network. And ensure we have... The network with 24-7 built-in security. Yep. AT&T Business. You know, he come to my home for summers when it came to helping people. The gecko was born ready. And his parents argued with me. They wanted him to become a doctor. I said, no, he wants to do insurance and he's good at it. Well, sure, he's the gecko, gecko, but I mean, he's my best friend. Like, even back in grade school, while others played house, he protected it. Hey, slow down. Gecko helps find the right coverage for your car and home. You're not my dad. From cars to home to pets, it's easy to Geico. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Oz for the facts. 
classic first-timers. They don't know that nearly half of all used cars have been in an accident. But Carfax shows how accidents impact price, so they don't have to overpay. Unpause. Oh, I'm up no accidents. Shop the all-new Carfax.com. The world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. Eleven teams came to New York City with one thing on their mind, a Big East title. We got ourselves a knockdown drag out battle in the Big East tournament. Oh. Got it! Dropping dimes! Old school basketball! You gotta be strong in Madison Square Garden. Cops is back on Fox Nation. The only place to watch new episodes. Get on the ground. You are going to jail today. Cops, new episode Friday on Fox Nation. And coming soon, Cops Spring Break. America is streaming. It's Fox College Hoops, and it's sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Building the bridges, that's what's taking place for the Georgetown Hoyas. Trailing by three with under 12 left in this one. Let's go in the huddle of the Hoyas coach. All right, keep staying physical and doing it. This is a great game. Great game. We gotta come up with the 50-50 ball. We gotta come up with that ball. The poise and the calm and the huddle of Georgetown with Coach Ed Cooley knows that his guys are on the road, battling, giving everything that they've got, but just want to clear up that they've got to get back to back. They have to get back to winning the 50-50 ball. This Early on, they were going Georgetown's way, but over the last three minutes, St. John's has been coming up with them. This public service announcement brought to you by Tim Brando, okay? <laughs> Don't bet on college basketball. Yes. If you were looking at the lines coming in, I think the Hoyas were around 18, 19 underdogs, uh -huh. right? Listen, if you've been watching Big East basketball this year, you know that they've got talent. Yes. They can score. Their problem is lack of toughness and leadership, mm -hmm. right? But they've got skill sets mm -hmm. with each individual player out there. And we've seen this before. I mean, St. John saw it before. Yes. 21-point lead in the last game that these two teams played against one another. Georgetown battled back, got it to three with 45 seconds to go in the game. That one goes in and out. And no ball movement on that one. Ball didn't change sides of the floor, and that yeah. usually leads to a challenge shot. Soriano gets, has his pocket picked by Fielder. And that's it. This is just me watching the game here from the side with you, my friend. St. John's looks a little tight there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The closer it gets mm -hmm. and the deeper into this game it mm -hmm. becomes, the perilous finish mm -hmm. will be there for the bubble team, and that's St. John's. Yes. Dennis Jenkins got to get back to making plays for, his, for himself and his teammates. Georgetown has cleaned them up on the glass. They're plus eight on rebounds. 23 to 15. This pass. Surprise Soriano, though. And he's going to get a push from Fielder. And, oh, he better watch out. He better watch out. He could be lit up. He didn't lock the call from Evan Burrows. He may have to see that one again. I yeah. thought he actually had really good position. I did, too. Let's see. He's vertical with the left. Yeah, he leaned into him. That's a yeah, good call by the official. Evan Burrows knew it. That's a cylinder call as well. Yeah. I think a lot of patience was shown by Burrows for not mm -hmm. lighting him up. Because he, he very easily could have. Jenkins doubled and trapped. And it's pulled away again by Epps. Six to 53. Jay Heath has given them Georgetown a tremendous boost off the bench. Now 12 points for him. On this end of the floor, Danis Jenkins has got to get more involved. He's only scored four points in the last 22 minutes. Soriano got it and fouled by Hilder. Hard to make that eight for Heath. Yeah. I thought Jay Heath should have taken this first one because he's been knocking it down from three But he gets into the lane a little drive a little pump fake to create a little separation able to knock that one down 
He's really given Georgetown a big boost off the bench. Now, aggression by Fielder, certainly something that Ed Cooley likes, but he's probably going to have to get him out of the game mm -hmm. because that's his fourth foul. Supreme Cook is back up and at the scores table, and he'll likely come in for Drew Fielder, and here he comes. Tough for Georgetown because he had made a couple of threes. Yes. And he spaces the floor, and that opens up driving lanes for guys like Jay Heath. Boy, this free throw problem for Soriano mm -hmm. needs to be solved. If not today, between now and Wednesday or Thursday when they play again, he's two out of eight at the line. And <laughs> he slaps his hands after making that as if, as if who was that guy? <laughs> he shot the last one. Exactly. 57-53. Tried to utilize a drop step. Tough take against Soriano. Bristol bails him out, but the pass is high. And it is corralled by Heath. Let it go. Oh! The bank is open on Saturday in Manhattan. Wow! 11 points off the bench now oh. for Jay Heath. Check the glass for a dimple. <laughs> I like it. 57 56. The ball staying on one side of the floor for St. John's. That's what Love they it. need more of. Oh, absolutely. Well, we talked about it earlier. He's got to be able to create offense for himself and his teammates. I like that one. Yeah, the crowd, you can tell they, they are on pins and needles, too. Yes. The students, the final second crowd, is trying to pump them up. But those that don't go to, go to Colonel Sucker are a little worried right now. Ledlam finds the trailer. It's Jenkins. That's who you want to have it. Oh, the iron kind. Ted Davis. Now, here they come. What a strong move. Heath is making a difference. So is Epps. And it's 61 to 58. Keep an eye on Epps. He's holding his side of his back. He may have a little back issue here. Let's see if he can work through it. 13 in the game for Heath. He's grown tired. Epps is hurting. You're right. And uh, Jeffrey Clark's come over to take a look at him yeah. to see if he needs a break because... And clearly that lower back mm -hmm. is a problem And that's one of the downsides of the back issue if you go over and sit down it tightens up one and you're done for the day So I admire the kid trying to work through it. Well <laughs> He's certainly not gonna get uh, a call in from his coach <laughs> right? <laughs> coach, I'm tired. Oh, I didn't see you. No, I didn't see it. <laughs> you're tired, right? <laughs> Trying to work some pick and roll with Cook is Epps. Beautiful runner. Beautiful runner. And notice who they're attacking. They're attacking Joel Soriano. And they've got to continue to keep him in ball screen situations and handoffs away screens. Jordan Epps has 21. Tanis Jenkins, 7 of 10 from the floor. Back and forth we go. Lafonso, yes. how much fun is this? And so much fun, especially in a situation like this where Jay Heath is making bank shots from 28 feet out. And then Dennis Jenkins run a little crossover between the legs, one of the prettiest pull-up chains in the Big East. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because you know that just because it fits in the cup holder doesn't make it to go. And you know how to break. Well, let's take you in the huddle of Rick Patino. You two guys are totally losing sight of the ball, and you're going to get burned. You're jogging with your back to the ball, and if we got to make a rotation, we can't do it. Because you're jogging like this with your back to the ball. You got to be ready for him to get beat, so you can rotate across and rotate down. Center. 
we talked about the awareness to be able to come up for each other. And Coach Patino has been exactly right. They're losing sight, losing vision on the defensive end. And what it does is makes your rotation slower. And we've seen Georgetown be able to take advantage of it time and time again, whether it be Epps on the dribble drive or Heath when he's been able to get in the painted area. Let's see if they can tighten that area up. Old basketball people will remember the name Hubie Brown. Mm. Rick was his protege. In those moments, Halloween with an answer. In those moments when he's explaining to his team, he sounds just like Hubie. How about that? He really does. 63 to 60, seven and change remaining. Hubie's my favorite of all time. I have all of his videos. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis in the open floor. Saved by Aline to Jenkins. And of course, you be coached in this building, as everyone knows, for many, many years. There's the slam from Soriano. And it's Lewis Jr. dropping the dime. And the lead gets back out to five after the response from Georgetown by St. John's. And that's a reach. Lewis with hands will pick up the foul. Folks, watch this. Joel Soriano is posting up on the high side. Supreme Cook is on the high side. Wonderful flash by Nahima Lee, which clears out the weak side defender. And what a beautiful pass over the top two from RJ. And Soriano pounds that thing. That's beautifully executed half court offense against the high side pressure of the post guy. That's deflected by Soriano. That's the second time he's gotten involved. Knocked away by the Hoyas, so St. John's will hold on to it. And Soriano getting some applause from his colleagues on the bench. Seven to nothing in blocks as a team for St. John's, and Soriano doing large measure to that. Oh, had that one knocked away. He was going to try to bounce pass it in there, but it was deflected. Another rejection. What work by Ludlam to deflect that yes. one out of bounds. What's happening on the, on the offensive end for St. John's, Georgetown is in the 2-3 zone, and then at about the 13-minute mark, they fan out to a man-to-man, -man, and that's really throwing them off. But what a great hustle by Chris Ludlam to be able to block that shot. That was a serious closeout. Mm -hmm. I let them the Harvard graduate student. <laughs> Grew up in nearby Brooklyn. Three blocks for Soriano today. Jenkins has a pair. Ledlam has a pair. Soriano checks out. And Zuby Ejiofor checks in. A little better matchup defensively with ZB Edger for in the game right now with Drew Fielder. They can switch that action or he can get out of edge and hard recover. Fielder thought about it. Yeah. Oh, how about that, that by Edger for? He knocked that one away. Aline lost it. A return to center. Bristol misses a chippy, but he's fouled. shield it there. Oftentimes what happens is when you're in the open floor that way and your defender's behind, you have a tendency to put your hands on him. Let's see if he got Yeah, he did. That's a good call by the official. Lower body. Mm -hmm. Got him right around, actually below the waistline yeah. on the hip. And it doesn't seem like much, but with your momentum going forward, you can actually get hurt on plays like that if you're the offensive player. Good call by the official. Wayne Bristol, a young man that grew up in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, played at Howard before transferring over. Had a shoulder injury while at Howard that shortened his season, his last year at that school. One of the truly great HBCUs, our friend and colleague Gus Johnson, mm. an alum of that fine institution. Nice. And the three holdovers along with Heath and Matumbo. Yeah. 65-62, on the floor, Dingle, Jenkins, Ledlin, Lewis, on edge of four, for the Johnnies. And we're getting to 
that period in the game at five minutes and below where the team with a lot to lose could get tight. Another banker. This one for Lewis. Well, maybe the basketball gods are on your side, yeah, right? Ben Zink has done a really nice job of stretching out that ball screen action man and RJ Lewis flashed to the free throw line, and that's exactly where the opening is against that pressure. This is where being the home team really helps. Lewis and a foul. And good hit. We can really feel this crowd of 14,000 yes. now yes. understanding the stakes. Yes. It's March, folks, and you cannot lose a game like this. This would be, yeah. from a metrics point of view, a horrible loss yes. for St. John's. With all the work they've done to win four in a row, and listen to them now. Listen to them here. Well, when they changed the name from Redmond to Red Storm, the Let's Go became the Johnnies as opposed to Redmond. I like it. The Red Storm's a nice name, yes. but it doesn't carry the same flow as no, Redmond. Exactly. So you go Let's Go Johnnies <laughs> instead of Redmond. Yeah. Now, Cooley going offense to defense with mm -hmm. these substitutions here with Fielder and Cook. They really struggled from the foul line. Oh, have the they ever. If they lose this game, it'll be because of the line. Yes. Now 16 of 25 from the foul line. There's another pilfer. RJ! They stay on their feet at the world's most famous arena. Lewis gets the foul. Number three on him, the 16th foul. And folks, on the previous play, R.J. Lewis, as he, oh, I thought he was <laughs> vertical on that one. Yeah. <laughs> he, he certainly got yes, all of that foul. Yes, you? yes. I'll tell you what, I think he's going to be an absolute star. As soon as R.J. Lewis learns how to knock down an open three to go along with his dribble drive and finish game, man. Well, Patino was telling you he just needed to have, to have time to practice. Yeah. Well, because of all those injuries, came over from UMass. The good news is they've got two more years of eligibility yes. with him. The last two defensive plays he was in the midst of, knocked it loose three possessions ago, and then actually stole the last one to get out of transition for the dunk. Some full court pressure here from Georgetown. Ed Cooley is doing everything he can to keep his team in this. Length of the floor! Jordan Dingle, ring it up! 71-64. Nice, beautiful pass. Soriano with a rejection, his fourth. Make it five. He's out of bounds. St. John's ball. Suddenly, rejection low belongs to the Jennings, not the Hoyers. Well, people have been talking about Soriano not scoring at the level that he was scoring at, but I continue to maintain he's doing all the other things. Uh, not two consecutive blocks in the same possession. He's doing a phenomenal job on the defensive end for the Red Storm. They have ten of them as a team. Five of them belong to Joel Soriano. Last year's most improved player, Bingle. Offensive rebound, Ludlum killed it, and one! Big time by Ludlum! Ivy League mind, Big East big time play! You need your other guys to be able to step up and make big plays in crucial situations. R.J. Lewis, a little thuggery and out of transition and slams that one home. And the athleticism in the open floor, impressive. And then you need an extra power play inside. Chris Lettenham up strong and one. St. John's up nine. Flex 
options pass, yeah. meaning that you're getting into the passing game or you're closing out on a three ball. They're doing that in space today. Oh, no question about it. And other guys are stepping up and giving them the big boost. R.J. Lewis with 10 off the bench, and he's got three steals as well. Chris Ledlam coming up with second chance opportunities. Uh, we're reaching the point now where Ed Cooley is thinking, must make. Yes. Suddenly down by 10, which takes some of that tournament bubble pressure off of the home team. Let's see how they respond. Need it. From three, uh -huh. he got it. A big time shot by Don Trellis Styles, the North Carolina transfer who's got a lot of talent. He's got only eight points today, but you don't get to North Carolina even on a roster without having a lot of this in your game. Yeah, a little ball reversal action, and then they did a little inside screen to free Don Trez Styles up for that corner three, and he completely knocks it down. Yeah, he's had his moments, too, mm -hmm. as a career player. Back in 2022 in their tournament upset of Baylor, he made big buckets off their bench. At nine points in that game and 25 minutes played. So again, he's been there, done that in key situations before. Yeah, he's shooting 36% from three coming into this game, TV, and 40% from three over the last three games. And he shot that one, a pressure three, by the way, from the corner with great confidence. And that comes with that maturity that you were just speaking of. Cooley's club is maximizing, I'll yes, say that. I mean, yes. they're still a very dangerous team. If not today, certainly next week. And look, if you play in this league, the only difference to me between the Big 12 and the Big East is the number of teams. Mm -hmm. Such depth in this league. Only DePaul has really been what you might call a, a check mark W. Right. Uh, Georgetown, I mean, you're going to have to big bring it big time if you're going to beat them. Yes. But most teams have, as yeah. their record would indicate. Yeah. But they're a dangerous team. There you see the foul difficulty. Fielder and Supreme Cook at the top of that list for the Hoyles. Georgetown back in that 2-3 zone. The weak spot is the foul line area. Let's see if St. John's can attack. Well, they made 9 in their last 10. 10 of the last 11. That one from point blank range. What a beautiful find and a great cut. Ledlam on the receiving end. A little ball reversal and a backside screen from Soriano created that open lane for Ledlam to catch that one and finish. Beautiful ball fake. Rattles at home yet again. Don Trez Styles bringing it. The game on the line. He's hit two big ones. It's a two-possession game with two and a half to play. The three-point line has kept Georgetown in this game. They now have ten made threes in this game. Now they're going to milk some clock with this possession, it would appear. Now they're taking away that pick and pop. Lewis now has to put it up. And he stays with it. It got on the rim with just under a second to play. Lewis with presence of mind, even after his own miss. Big bucket. And now commits the foul. Folks, R.J. Lewis has had a tremendous impact on this game. Soriano setting a little screen on the backside for Ludlam to be able to be wide open. And what a beautiful pass. And here he's trapped. And yet the presence of mind to be able to chase that basketball down and tip it in. R.J. Lewis has had a huge impact on this game off the bench. Well, you see, with that particular play right there, his understanding time and score. He knew he was up against the clock, so he certainly had a chance to, Ed Cooley's talking about the potential violation, but Lewis did launch that shot. It was a little scoop to the hoop. Mm -hmm. He launched that shot before the clock went to zero. By the scantest of marks. Yes. And it did hit the rim, yep. <laughs> by the way. It did. 78-72, Georgetown coming with full court pressure. Only down six, partner. 
allow your defense to continue to play. No silly fouls here. Got to make St. John shoot it. Ah. Boy, that's one yeah. that they truly did not want. Yes. And that's the worst kind of yes. foul. And he's solid and sound. And now every foul from this point forward is an automatic two. Jenkins, an 83% free throw shooter, will be at the line now. With 140 remaining. Tell you. Known Ed Cooley for a long time, mm. and I know you have too. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that, as you mentioned earlier, if you're going to get Georgetown with Ed Cooley there, you better yes. get him now. <laughs> yes. Because it's only going to get better. Too much talent in and around the Virginia, Maryland, mm -hmm. D.C. area for yes. him. There are already early signs that it's going to be a very rich recruiting season for him. Maybe not able to go through the portal as easily as some others. Sure. Because uh, those veteran players are looking for quick fixes to their final season. Yeah, he's an energetic and an effective communicator. If I'm a young dude, I want to go play for Ed Cooley. Yeah. If you're Georgetown, you'd rather foul Soriano. Yes. Put him on the line at three out of nine today. Not this guy, yeah, who's 83%. Guy. Yes. Get it. Bristol from deep. Bingo! Another train. It's down to five with 91 seconds left. And partner, yeah, they're getting a little squeamish again yes. here at the Mecca. Well, with with R.J. Lewis going down, Georgetown was five on four. And watch this collision here. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. no call there. And that's. Pushing in transition to Styles, and Styles made a great decision to suck Jordan Dingle, number three, and white end a little bit more that opened up even more space for Wayne Bristol Jr. to knock down that three. I know that the players are looking for those moments when they can pick up the player control foul. You see the three point shooting there. Mm -hmm. And if you're right, partner, 52%, averaging 34. It's been their day Come from on. deep. But when you flop like that, and Lewis did, yes, you put your team in peril with exactly. five on four at the other end. Indeed. And we talked about earlier, and we talked about Georgetown specifically, uh, to not foul and to play smart and to be disciplined late. And that's really what it comes down to at times, whether you win or lose, is can you be the more disciplined team with two minutes to go in the game? Every possession means so much. That's a wide open Lewis. What a find by Jenkins. Big time. That's why Rick brought him over from Iona. Dropping big time dives. What they're doing on that ball screen action. As soon as the helper comes, they're flashing RJ to the foul line area. Lewis has, good offense. Lewis has 14, 12 of them this half. Fielder not there. That might help put it away. Jenkins calls it down. Now you got a foul. Good for a trap. Don't get it. Got a foul. And Jenkins makes sure it's going to be them, but no whistle. And now we get a foul. When they were going for the rebound, foul committed. Well, they will get to the strike. Jenkins was clearly trying to get one. I'm a little surprised they went to the rack so quickly. Yeah. And folks, watch the backside here with R.J. Lewis here in the corner. As that ball screen takes place, now all of a sudden Soriano takes the tag guy, and now you get R.J. Lewis flashing to the foul line area. It puts Jay Heath in a tough position of having to play two. That's a beautiful adjustment offensively by Rick Pitino, and they've been executing it well here the last four minutes. Well, Lewis does get to the free throw line, courtesy the foul by Bristol when he was going for that rebound and went up the back. Well, the Johnnies as a team are getting a little bit better at the line mm -hmm. during the late stages. I'm excited about the future of R.J. Lewis Jr., number 12 in white. He's going to be an absolute stud. 
Boy is in a must-make situation now. That three ball is dropped in by Jay Heath to keep them alive at 84, 78. Yeah. We're going to get it into Jenkins' hands, and it's likely to stay there for quite some time. But you got a foul now. <laughs> Three ball. This one by Heath is just keeping the Hoyas hanging around. Yeah, 12 made threes now for Georgetown on the afternoon. An offensive rebound by Dontre Styles and the awareness to be able to kick that basketball out. Well, the three point line has kept Georgetown in this game all afternoon long. Sariano will check back in. Boy, a great contribution today given by Glenn Taylor Jr. Yes. as he sits down. Graduated from Iona over the summer to ensure his eligibility. What a difference maker Dana Jenkins has been in his graduate senior year. The Giants are going to escape, but it wasn't easy. It was not. And yet to be able to hang in there and make gritty plays down the stretch against a Georgetown team that was lights out from the three-point line. Twelve members of the original Big East put on quite a show today. And the Naismith Hall of Famer, Rick Pitt.